This conference will now be recorded. Okay. What we'll do is today we have uh, spoke about uh, how to install that polybase and overview. So what we'll do today, we'll try to work on uh, creating the external table. First, we'll do create a juice storage. Then we'll go and create master key. After that, we'll create Azure credential. Fourth one, we'll create data source. Fifth, we'll create file format. The sixth, we'll create external table. Okay, this all we'll do it now. Right, let's go to the portal. Go to resource group here. I'm creating a resource group. RJ iPhone demo. Okay, just click on review and create. Validate successfully. Just click on create here. Okay, yeah. Let's go there. Just try to refresh this. You should get the resource group RG. Right now, go to resource create resource here. Now you need to create go to the storage. Go to Azure storage account here. Okay, go here. Resource group. Now give the name of the resource group here. What name it should be the unique resource uh, storage name and this is the endpoint url using which you access the storage account for external table so the files are stored here so give the unique name right just go there azure storage blob demo okay then once you get a tick mark with the green color then that means that this name is available for you just go to the location and give the premium type or store type here performance type then we will go for standard and versions you have go for version 2 replication local redundant only access tire cool or hot just for cool go for cool because we don't randomly access we are just doing it for the example purpose just go for networking here and just say next and if you want to enable secure this all left to you we already spoke on this just say next here and click on review and create now it creates a Azure storage account for you and the validation has passed okay just click on create Second, yeah, uh, this uh, process actually what we are doing the for table creation before source and data source. This is the one time, right? For database, each database, yeah, you yes, for one time you need to do it, not for each database, okay. for any table Only that you point. wanted, you can do it, yeah, for polybase. Okay, suppose in future, actually, in, instead of uh, comma delimited and uh, suppose pipe delimited, you need to. Some do, you need to you need to create one more file format one, one more same thing huh? all the five yes. items we have to do not all the five items 
the file format one data okay. so this creden credential is already there okay only so file format, the file format is yes yes just pin to dashboard here i'll tell you that point just okay. hold on for that if you go to the resource now we have created just come to home page here go to resource groups here go to rgi and demo okay you have the storage account created just click on this we are working with a container okay now just go to container sorry we are in storage account go to containers here now create a container name okay i'll give data files here okay access level that is depends upon the access that you wanted to give okay just go for private nothing arm or you can go for container access also there is no issue go for private private here okay now you got this right now you have got only the container that has created but you don't have data so what we'll do we'll take some files from here from desktop the simple files will take with the comma okay these are the four files i have four records with first file with 20 department with the second file 30 department with three records go here i'm just removing it then we'll try to do i'll ask you to do with it then what happens we'll see if it comes okay right now i'll try to upload all these files there what are the files i have in local system here i will upload to this drive so this is what container in data place just go to click on upload okay go to select for files here i'll go to that file here path here okay go here just copy all these files say upload what you want to do block size is all up to left over for you for each file you have 4 mb if it is beyond then i told you how it is going to divide right i'll just go to override if already files exist to which folder you want i'll just give the folder name here if it is already there then if it's not there it will create if it is already there then that will get overrated okay because the option that we have given the override files already exists just go for upload here okay we got six files here right we have done with this so what we required from here in azure storage account we require this azure name azure storage account name and the container name that we want where we have placed and this access key right we'll go step by step so yesterday we have done in the virtual machine installing in cloud so what i'm doing right now i am taking mine local instance okay local same how how do yesterday what we have done we have created a local uh, virtual machine in the cloud installing sql server now i'm taking my local machine the same thing there it's a virtual machine here my local desktop there's no difference there okay right what i'll do i'll just go and create database here i'm creating a new database called polybase db okay now what i'll do i'll just use that polybase db here okay now you are coming to that position just refresh this means you are using that now go to new query what is our standard enough 
what are the we have five steps to do it yesterday we have spoke there one is creating a master key right the second one is create credentials okay the third one is we need to go and create a data sources right go and create data source sorry data sources next one is file format right next one is external table this is all we need to go and create step by step then only you'll be able to access the files from there okay yeah let's go there I'll take now when you go for external when you go for master key yesterday I told now I created new database this for this you don't have any master key I told you when you don't want to perform this external table create any credential or data sources or file format external table you need to compulsory have a master key created there until if you don't create a master key it is not allowing you to create the credentials right yesterday we have shown so what it was telling you there should be only single master key you can't have multiple master keys without master key it was not allowing right let's do it now what we'll do we'll try to do it without creating master key for external without creating a master we'll try to create this credential then we'll see whether the error is coming yesterday we got that error i showed you so let's do the same thing again here okay right i'm doing it now for the master key sorry external create credential create external credential okay i'm doing this let's go there create external okay sorry sorry database scoped credential okay here the name of the credential here okay with some parameters the parameters is identity you can give any name name of the identity comma then secret right this is nothing but this is the access key from e access keys of storage account right this is nothing but access key of the storage account right this is what now let's take it this take here paste here we don't have we have not created till now go here i'll give as azure storage credential okay what is the name of identity give any name okay i'll give as azure storage user you will not use anywhere this identity you will use only this name of the scope of the credential okay in later part but what about access key this access key from where you need to get you need to get from this okay from the storage we have this access key just go there copy this key one or key two you have key one or key two just copy this key one just go and paste it here okay now let's see let's go and try this press f5 what is telling you because we have not created a master key master key should be one per database right please create master key or open open the master key in the session before performing this operation yesterday also we got the same thing let's go and create before that 
I'm creating on the top now create master key okay why do we need to create because to perform this polybase mechanism there should be one master key created right only one not more than one right create master key okay encryption by password give any password okay a b c d e one two three four five okay right any password okay anything it should not be a b c d only you can give your name or anything desktop name anything but should be unique okay just press f5 once you are able to do then Press F5. Now you created, right? Then where do you check this password created? Okay. Just we have a system table called symmetric keys. Just select start from sys dot because this is a system one system table. So sys. If at all you have user table, then you get DB or your own schema. Okay. Symmetric. semantic keys here okay just go there now try to press f5 okay you got the name name has taken default one and the algorithm it is used aes256 and when you have created when you have modified this all you have okay now what i'll try to do i'll create a new one again i'll try to create a new one will it allow or will it tell you anything let's see what is telling it is already existing try to drop that and create a new one okay yeah right let's leave this here now come to our scope of credential tk right scope of credential okay this is entire for your azure account right only once you need to create leave about the file format i'll talk the later file format this is entire because we are taking the access key for entire storage because in storage if you go to this storage this is storage in storage you guide to as i told you in the earlier classes this container if you go to in azure storage account you can have 100 containers okay and one container sorry sorry not that okay come here one subscription can contain 100 azure storages okay and one azure storage can contain one storage can contain 500 of tb of data it this finite tb of data can go include container file queue table right including four services that as this can include contain data of 500 tb of data right and now we are creating that scope credential for this entire azure storage because we are taking this as access key from this to for this storage account okay then that will work for all the 100 storage account if you create a storage account one if you create in this storage account you have sorry in this storage account you create one container for that it will work if you go and create one more container go here go to this here 
go and create one more container here give demo container okay Cre create here so now this axis key that you have created which the axis key is here will work for both the container that is data files container and demo container for both the containers it's not like you need to create a access key for each and everything for each and every container or for each and every file share table or queue it's not like that this will work this access key will work this access key will work for all the containers in the storage okay n number of containers also okay yeah go here create this storage uh, sorry create this database scope credential just go there now you have done so once you have done so what do you need to do if you want to check where this is stored where this storage account is created or where this credential is created we have again system defined table here select sar from sys dot sys table database credentials here just go there okay the name of the credential is if you can see this name you find here okay and identity okay when did you create when did you modify you have everything okay yeah after this is over what we need to do you need to create the external data source just go there okay create external data source okay let's go with syntax create external data source okay name of this name of the data source here okay with you have some parameters here okay one is type this will take either Hadoop or RDBMS okay in what case it takes Hadoop in what case it takes RDBMS okay is if you go for Azure storage or Azure data lake store it will ask it will take Hadoop okay if you tell you go for SQL server I told you cross query database also in Azure SQL database and SQL data cross query will not work so in that case you need to go for the external table I told you so in that case this type will go Azure SQL server or DWH then in that case you'll have RDBMS okay we'll talk, talk this later as I told you it takes two parameters Hadoop or RDBMS so leave for that enough will take Hadoop because we are going to talk with work with Azure storage okay the next one is location what is this location now okay location then next is credential okay yeah when you say this credential we already create in the other window this credential right because we don't want to access this so credential we have created just take the name of the credential from here database scope credential just paste the name of the credential is here okay just go that is name of the database scoped credential okay yeah now for this what you'll do is here WSBS VAS BS colon colon here lab container name 
ओके एट द रेट स्टोरेज नेम स्टोरेज अकाउंट नेम डॉट ब्लॉब डॉट कोर डॉट विंडोज डॉट नेट ओके द ओनली थिंग इज यू नीड टू रिप्लेस विथ द कंटेनर नेम वी हैव टेकन डाटा फाइल्स इज अ कंटेनर इफ यू गो देयर गो टू कंटेनर यूर यू हैव अ कंटेनर एज दिस under this you have folder that will see later okay this employees folder leave about that but what is the container name you have a data files okay and what is the storage name azure storage blob demo okay if you go to the properties also you'll get it see here okay you have a storage name blob core windows dot net what did i do i just went to that container name i just right click on the three toggle button contact click on there then go to container properties here then you will find that url the same thing i have given this one storage dot blob dot core dot windows dot net see ya right yeah just come on to that give the name here okay azure storage source here okay what is the type of value that you type you wanted we'll have only this adobe comma okay now give the container name just copy the value from there data files place it here okay now go to the storage storage name azure storage blob demo paste it here okay now go and get the name of the scope credential okay get the name of the scope credential from other window azure storage credential right that we have created go here and paste the name here this should work this should suffice your requirement now okay and don't place this into single quotes okay we are not string it's a direct value okay because we have told it to take two two values either adobe or rdbms because we are working with azure storage and data lake store then adobe only okay just run this now it will check whether scope credential is right or not because we have given the access key that key access because we are given access key a secret here in storage credential that is right or not it will check with this data source okay now you need to go and check where this data source is present select start from sys data sys external data sources okay just go there now press see the location the name of the store name of the data source okay and a path of the data azure storage this is the location and the type is adobe when we come for rdbms then it is going to change as rdbms when cross query database works okay right last step we are left over with creating external file after that we'll create file format okay right go here till here what we have created master key and what we have created scope credential would be same and here it would be same when container is same for all in container what we have done in container 
you can create one many folders in this container because I create employee you can go and create other folders department employees or you can go and create uh, countries or you can go and create products or you can go and create sales like this you can create any number of folders here so when you are working with the same container that you have created here okay the container that you have created here so you can use this azure storage if you are working with other container other than data so data files here because i have other container also if you go and see i have demo container in that case you need to create one more data source here one more data source why because the container name would be different because we are not working with the data files we are working with other container now that is called demo container so you need to create other data source okay yeah but in the real time you will create only one container and you work but in the rare case you want to bifurcate or segregate then you need to go and create the containers and you need to create multiple data sources okay yeah now go here create external file format okay now what you'll do here is you'll just tell what is the type of the file is it file form what is the file format is it deemed file or comma separated file how it is if it is comma because most of the columns would be like emp number comma emp name comma emp cell like this or you can have emp number tab emp name tab emp cell tab or emp number pipe symbol emp name pipe symbol emp cell like this you will have different so in that case you need to create because in container you can have multiple files with different format that you don't know because that is what customer is going to decide then in that case for each and every delimiter that you get for that respect to delimiter you need to tell because this is file format is with field terminator right field terminator is comma right for this field terminator is tab if you go for this the field terminator is pipe symbol so in that case you need to create different file formats there is no excuse for this okay right that is what Ramesh was asking the same question okay just go now we'll create the file file format here create external file format give the name of the file format here I'll give comma text file format because I was uploading with comma files only okay right just go there now with what type of format you have that file format format underscore type okay what is that I have delimited text okay there is also keyword now we have format format underscore options because you need to tell what type of delimiter is that okay field underscore terminator okay then we'll go with right so it's giving some error terminator t e r m i n a t o r yes right no worries okay just go and create now it should not give any error what is that it is giving for your field options oh not 
field right not filed it's field okay right just go there now press f5 now you have created now same thing you can go and check again here select star from sys data okay external okay yes press f5 go here this okay date format row delimiter by default new line okay string terminator delimiter and date format you can give your date format also what type of date if at all you have a column of date in the in the file then that do you want that date format to be like a dd so mm yy or dd mm like yy here so it means like 17th 10 9 here it means like 17 okay 2019 like this you can give it here no worries for this okay that you can do it later okay now you can see this okay we have only told field terminator and we have told row terminator okay right now we are we have done with all the four things here first thing we have created a master key if you come here we have created a master then credential data source file format we have done with this all we are only left over with external table right let's go take a new window here right what do you need to create i told you data would be stored in either the files would be stored in azure storage or azure data lake store don't worry we'll work with the data lake store also once this is over because the access permission is different when you work with azure data lake store so we'll work right so we'll create this external table the same concept again as you are creating this data file format data source data source file format a table you need to use a keyword called right external before create right if you see this we have created a master key scoped master key scoped database but if you come here you have created data source you have created external the same thing file format you have created external and now for the table also you need to create keyword called external okay just go create external tk then name table here then name of the table okay go here now you should get here column one data type one column two data type two column three okay just go there column n data type n okay here now this is same whatever the data types you have whatever data types you have in sql server it supports all the data type all the data types you need not worry about this okay you not worry there is no uh, there is no problem with the data types okay what say all the data types it supports right next let's go this is same like creating a table the only thing is we have given the keyword called external here okay now let's come back here now with we have some options here so the, the options you need to tell what are those options we have created that uh, file format and we have created the data source right because if you see here 
scope of credential is created we don't require this azure credential why because azure storage credential is used in this data source okay because so so this data source and this file format are required enough these two are required because this data source is using credential so you need not use again in the external table indirectly you are using because you are using this data source name in external table right just go there now give the location what is the location because you need to tell which location you are using it means folder folder name right what is the folder name here because if you go here this is a folder that you are using it right just go there to the storage here in this this is a container name right if you see this container this is a container name right data files in this you have employees folder you can have the even subfolders also but i'm using only the folder called employees here you can have folder under folder also so what do you need to do there this is a parent folder again subfolder name one sub subfolder name two like this in view because in data files is a container right in this you have employees in this also you want to have other folder in that you have other folder then you can go and create folder subfolder sub sub subfolder like this we are not like this okay right just go there now two commas are there now what do you need to do data source what is the data source here this is nothing but name of the external data source here right file underscore format what is this again name of the file format that is external file format okay go here okay this is what okay just take this I'm pasting here right now what you'll do whatever you know just replace this location right go with first data sources what is the name of the data source go to the other window get the data source Azure storage data source here just put it here go to other window come to the file format comma text file format you are done with this what is the location now okay just go to this storage the storage is yes. data files in this you have called employees right in that we have files here in employees click on this this employees folder in that you have files so don't need to specify because we need to read all the files so no need to go and give all the file names or start something just give the folder name just go and press give the folder name here okay you are done with this now what is left over name of this right just go x why i'm giving this ext just for recognize recognizing whether this external table or what so ext i'm giving you just remove this column names okay you how many columns you have in each and every file four columns id name salary department number just go there now amp id int amp name where care some 20 year okay amp cell decimal 12 comma 2 amp department number int okay now you are done right just go there 
now press now try to run this it will validate everything now whatever you are given whatever you have created that data sources external file format that it will try to validate now now let's go there let's go okay what is the name of the file name of the table just this similar now you need not give for select how do you write select start from table right table name the same thing here you not tell any external manage table and external table one and the same so you need not give an external only for creating time creating a statement there you need to tell external but while selecting you need not write an external okay just go there select start from okay just press f5 okay you are getting this all data now you all whatever the data that you have put here you are getting all just try to open the data and see 331 332 333 just go there okay right the same thing go other table should also have 331 because it has come for the two times see a 331 332 333 so that is the reason you have got two times here okay as I told you, just go there enough. Just go to this database. What we have created at all. We have this external resources, right? Just go there. External data source that we have created. Where is that? That we have created external data source. Right? Or do storage source. File format. comma file format right these are the two sources that created now go here external tables what is the name of the external table ex employee just go there okay right now we'll try to perform delete operation okay will perform a delete operation there update or delete what happens you see now insert into ex employee values go say 501 something like Srikanth here and set 5000 rupees just go for 10 department okay now you try to do it it is disabled right it is insert into external table is disabled but you can turn this option okay to insert that we'll see later just go there now i'll go and update one of the salary I'm selecting this okay now go update ex employee set emp cell is equal to 10,000 where emp id is equal to 331 okay just see now similarly try to delete from where EMP ID is equal to 331 it's not allowed okay now the data is where data is here right data is in container I'll go and drop the table drop external table you need to create it external otherwise it will not work if you don't create then we'll see what happens drop table ex employee 
then it will tell there is no object here. Okay, you can't use drop ta drop table with ex employee because ex ex is an external table. Use drop external table, right? Just go there. If you drop, what happens? You know, only the schema is going to get deleted. The schema, the schema that you have created, right? This schema would go. Actually, data would not be there in this table, right? I'm deleting. That is dropping. Okay, now try to refresh this and see. It has gone within fraction of fraction of not fraction of second. Just it left. Just go there enough. You don't have. Okay, but what about if whether the data is there or not? Do you think the data is already there? Yes, data is already there. Now just go there enough. What do this? Now you just go here, data files, employees. You have data still here. There is no data deleted, right? Yeah. So what we'll do? We'll go with. We have done with the Azure storage. So we'll go with data lake store now. How many people are there here? Any doubt here in Azure storage? Srikant, so you have, you have created uh, in the, the database in on prem, right? On prem, was you so manually prem. created one DB, right? Uh, so you are loading from external source to a local uh, on prem DB now. No, That's it's not mean. like uh, I am not on prem. It's similar like creating a virtual machine and installing SQL Server. Yesterday we have done, but today again, if I repeat the same thing, again creating virtual machine and installing SQL Server would take time. Instead, I've deleted the resources. Uh, no, the database that you have showed, right? That is an on yeah. your local, right? That is on prem. My so this one, poly based DB you have created, right? See, local, on prem, and virtual machine are one and the same okay on-premise mm -hmm. my desktop correct okay is my desktop where you have, where i have sql server installed yesterday in the cloud in the cloud what i've done i've created a virtual machine and then you are installed sql with the uh, poly yeah, feature Windows. Windows Server 2016 data center. I have uh, created operating. Yeah. Correct. Then after that, what I have done, I have installed a SQL Server. Mm -hmm. What I am but doing now to access you, this? Yeah, yeah. If you yeah, show yeah, the I'll server tell, name, yeah. Sorry. I'll, I'll tell you. I'll come to that. So this has as some IP address 192. Some 203. 11. Some 21 as IP address. So what I'll do? This in the cloud machine. I was going to remote desktop. Then I was providing this IP address 192.203.11.21. Then I was opening that SSMS there. That's man. I've installed SQL Server. Then I was opening the SQL Server there. So what it mean? This is also machine, and this is also machine, right? Correct. Well, Correct. That is what I've done because yesterday it was stay again. I was installed because I want to show you that. Uh, Without Java runtime uh, engine, you will not able to do this policy based feature. So to show that that I have done and if I again I create there again, it would take time because if I create and stop that it would take uh, it would charge the money so that I have deleted that I have done on my local desktop. So uh, one and the same okay. there is no difference here and there. Uh, okay, I got that point and here Ashrita is the server name, right? So this is yeah, yes. a on prem yeah. on prem on -prem server. Yes. yes. With uh, with polybase enabled yes polybase enabled yes yes okay so we are loaded from azure to on prem now yeah on yeah that's not my question not, yeah on prem yeah on prem but we'll do it for uh, azure sql data warehouse also <laughs> don't worry 
okay okay yeah thanks okay. Yeah. yeah 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 we'll go we'll not do it on this now what we'll do we'll not do that azure data lake store onto my local machine we'll do we'll go and create sql data because it's uh, it take only next half an hour time we'll just do it that just go let's go okay. to the portal now okay thank you yeah go to resource now any doubt ramesh or srinivas or any anyone else i'm going ahead with azure sql any doubt guys here uh, yes sir uh regarding we are using a file format it's a comma separated right let's suppose yeah, in a file different types nah. of files is there right so nah. it will be work different types of files means is comma separated pipeline in one file we have a different types of file formats in one file time, in file no no uh, see what your question is you have yeah. one file coming with employee.txt employee1.txt yeah. yeah. employee2.txt this yeah. all file belongs to table called employees table the customer tell, employee. told you that these all files has to be loaded to employee table only okay understanding right yes, what i'm trying to tell you yeah Yes. so when you are trying to load this all files this file all the file should contain same delimiter no where in the real real time no where in the real time each and every file will have a different delimiter to the same table might okay. be there might be there i'll tell you might be there if data is coming coming from different sources okay one you assume okay. like you are getting sap sap or you are coming from oracle or you are getting some sybase db you are getting but these all files that is generated will go to this employees table only but this has some comma separator this has tab separator this has some pipe symbol delimiter so then what you need to do for this you need to create a separated folder called emp sap folder okay for this also you have to create emp employee oracle folder for this also you need to create employee sybase folder then you need to create individual external file for this for this you need to create separate for this you need to create separate okay for this also you need to create a separate file external file okay now the question is data source would be one only because you will put in the same container in the same container these three folders are created because data files is a container name is the container name okay in azure storage this is very good till here this is very good now you have put all these files in that storage data files folder now you create an external table for this because external table will take the file format okay then in that case what you need to do where was we, we uh, did where where I was yeah external each and external table will take one file format okay now what you need to do for sap you need to create one external table for oracle you need to create one other external table because it also requires a file format and Sybase, you need to create other external table. Okay, but data is not containing in the table. So what do you need to do? And all the if if schema for this all three files, three three different sources. Schema for three different sources are same. Okay, then what you can do? 
write select from sap external table union all okay select start from oracle external table union all select start from sybase external table right your requirement will suffice now okay no now is a question okay. now you might have the question like this has some 20 fields it has only 15 fields it has some 10 fields only okay this table is containing only eight fields okay these all eight fields are present in this 20 fields these are present in 15 these are present in 10 so what do you need to write go on right here column 1 column 2 dot 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 to column 8 go there place this here right this will work for you now Answer your question now. Yes, yes. Yeah, this will work. You need not worry because it's not like you get from one system. You will get from multiple system. Might be multiple delimiters would be there. There is no issue. You can work like this also. But the only thing is you need to create a appropriate external table for each and every source and work on that. You need to do it. Okay. Yeah. Let's go. I think I have answered this your question TK and we'll work why we go to external table I told you then we'll work with the CTA create we'll come to this point later okay create table as select you have this concept in SQL data warehouse okay we'll work on this i'll tell you why we need to go for this okay what is the mechanism for this why people go for this i'll talk to you this i'll tell you later on monday mostly monday or tomorrow we'll talk on azure sql database and azure sql data warehouse so I'll tell you what happens exactly all these statements there. Okay, hold on till then. Don't worry if at all I I forgot also I'll tell you because I'll all I'll I'll deal when I'm coming to that topic. No need to worry. Okay, we'll tell what is not told in the topics that I uncovered. I'll be telling. Don't worry about that. Okay, let's go to there. We're already 7:15. Okay, yeah. Let's go. Go to resource now go to resource now we are going with sql data whereas don't go for database i'll tell you there is difference between data virus and database we'll talk that later tomorrow in the morning when i come with the cross query database i'll tell you why we not will not go with external table for sql database why we'll go with sql data virus only tomorrow i'll tell you otherwise you can create and tell me tomorrow morning okay just go to this give some name for this sql dwh db okay i'm giving some database name and it is asking for the server if you already have a server you can add, attach this database to the server we'll talk this later okay it's not then go here sql server dwh demo okay i will answer you all your questions please hold on okay let me create this then this location is not available for this subscription just go to other location because it's trial so some of the services are not allowed so you need to go and check which locations is available okay just click on create 
now go to this performance dryer okay we'll take small one not the big one we'll talk all this later okay security for the it's not see here performance level is selected region is limited okay just go and change the location where we were taking go to the server okay it is asking for the region to change when you take the free trial subscription right this would be the problem because some of the services is not available for free subscriptions Okay, just go there now. Central, South Central. Oh, West US. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it is telling you like uh, if you go for beyond DW hundred. Thousand C, it is not allowed. But better you come down to the level, okay? For each and every level you down, the price is going up. See if it now it is for hundred ninety nine rupees per hour, two hundred, three hundred. What is this DW? We'll talk this later. Just understand for now. I'll just go for two hundred only. Just go apply here, okay? Just go for additional settings. The same thing. Back up all this. Okay, I'm creating not I'm not creating a machine. I'm creating a service patch service just review Okay, it is telling you 196 hour 90 rupees per hour. Just go there It is validating. Okay validation is success is trying to create So for this what I'll do I'll just remove my local instance now I'm just removing this okay, I'll connect to that server The reason why did I tell you that SQL database will not support is SQL database will not have this file format. Where, where, where is that? Yeah, this file format it doesn't contain for SQL database. For only SQL database it contains. Okay, that I'll show you because the way I was showing you in that external resources data source and file format data source would be there but file format would not be there so that polybase is not supported for sql database okay yeah i'll show you that tomorrow when we do with the cross query It take one two minutes, but when you are creating this SQL data data varos right? Azure SQL data varos we were creating. So when yesterday when we have created that virtual machine right? Virtual machine. We have installed SQL Server 2016, right? But here that we have created machine installed. But now we are creating SQL data varos. This is a path service Right, it's similar like Solid state I will not able to view Okay, that you can only connect So in this case, we are not installing any any software SQL server software SQL server installation is not done by us Okay, it is done by Microsoft vendor because it is a cloud provider Okay, so in that case what version you will get what version of 
SQL Server you'll get here in Azure SQL Data Warehouse. What you'll get here? What is the latest version of SQL Server? The latest version of SQL Server will be installed by Microsoft. Okay, it might be 2017, 2018, or sorry, 17 or 2019. Okay, they'll take care. You need not worry about that. But you will not be able to determine until you wanted 2016 only or 2014 only or 2012 for your requirement. You will not be able to tell because Microsoft is taking so. Every time we'll get the latest version of SQL Server only. Okay, yeah. Let's go whether you got this or not. Yeah, it's, it's doing it. Just go to the Microsoft documentation. If possible, I'll try to find out some links and give you for Azure Storage, Data Lake, and SQL Polybase here. So I'll mail you. So that you can also go to that but whatever I told tell you in the class just refer that video for two to three times and go and read so that you'll have good understanding on that. You should also be able to speak. When someone says this polybase Azure data store or Azure data lake store. Then you should be able to tell these all what happens. What is what what is cloud services providers this all. You should be able to speak to that level you should come so if you want to come to that level just go through that all the videos that i provided do it for one just roughly blindly watch and try to do it then go for documentation then you'll have good understanding then you should you will be able to speak the terminology what is written in microsoft documentation at the end of the day everyone will be able to do it sitting in front of the system going going across the net or asking other team members help but you should be able to speak as the experience goes if you want to come up to the higher level and you to be unique person in the company where you get recognition then you need to have these all skills Rikan, one question here. So, how can we know if our database or on prem SQL server is polybase enabled or not? Is there any? Yeah, you can go to this. So, uh, you can go to this services.ms. You, you can go to this services.msc. Okay. Go to go here. These two should be there. Okay. And these sh both should be keep on running when you want to do it. Then okay. try to try to stop and see, create extend table. Then we see whether it is going to work or not. Okay, okay. There is and, another mechanism. Uh, also. Okay, and Polybase yeah, only works with SQL database, but not SQL data warehouse, right? That's what it. No, no, no. It works with SQL the Azure SQL data warehouse, but not with SQL database. I'll come to that point tomorrow. I'll show you. Okay. I was telling you that in external table external data sources we have two one is file format one is data source okay now we mm -hmm. have seen for the on promise you have these two for the database so these are available for these two are available for Azure SQL data warehouse but this is not this file format sorry this file format option is not available for Azure SQL database okay 
so when you don't have a file format then you will not able to work with external table because external table requires these two sources okay but for on prem it will work but azure sql it will not work azure sql database it doesn't work because okay. file format is not there but we have done recently for on prem which worked for external table right yeah for for on prem it works okay okay uh, that's virtual, what my okay. on prem sql server installed on virtual machine azure sql database data warehouse works okay on premises sql server installed on virtual machine azure sql data warehouse you will work with you can work with polybase mechanism okay but when you Clear. go for this azure sql database you don't have this file format option under external data sources when you don't have external table when you say create external table see here you have yes yes i got it srika thank you here you right this file format option is not there then if you don't have this external table will not work for not sql correct. database okay there's a difference between yeah. sql database and data warehouse we'll talk that later hopefully sure, sure. tomorrow or monday okay okay thank you yeah. uh, why it's taking this much time okay let it get created we'll go and create i think it got created also go to yeah one minute go to resource group go to data yeah it not got created so what you do let it get created we'll go to sql data sorry azure data lake store go to storage here go to data lake store give some name adls nothing but azure data lake store that is a name uh, data file storage okay this is a name now resource group okay then the location and there is an encryption okay this is the algorithm that is applied by the microsoft to encrypt your data when you are writing and reading it okay when you are writing it is encrypted and stored which is not man readable when it is de when you want to read it then it is decrypted and showed you in the man readable okay right just go for click on create it has only one difference here for the data lake storage and uh, uh, azure storage and data lake store the difference is only the credentials there i'll tell you what credentials you need to use it should have done in the first when i came in the morning only a blob got created sorry it is storage yeah data lake store has got created here okay i'll go to data explorer you don't have any access keys here if you see there is no access keys like similar to azure storage right if you go to this azure blob storage you have access key okay for that you don't have just go for the yeah for that also got created yeah we'll go by step by step go to data lake uh, resource group go to the server so this server you will not able to directly connect just go copy this server name you can this server name right you will not able to connect this server name directly what you need to do for this we'll try create adding that go to the connect here go to database okay give other thing is this is a patch service right we have created a sql data veros and sql azure sql database are 
टू पैच सर्विसेस सो दिस विल नॉट वर्क विथ विंडोज ऑथेंटिकेशन ओके इट विल डेफ इट इट विल वर्क ओनली विथ SQL Server authentication only. You have other authentication also will not work with this. With the real time standard people work with the SQL Server authentication only. Okay. Yeah. Just go there. Now give the username demo. Okay. You need to bear me for next. 25 minutes okay now what is trying you to ask you is because patch service is other location i told you other thing other days to access any service in the cloud you need to add your ip address so your ip address will not directly connect to the your cloud service there would be some other in, intermediate look intermediate ip address which is going to talk to you your system in the on premise and sql server service in the cloud right i told you this other day i opened that comment prompt and showed you also other day just cancel this go to here okay go to firewall setting what do you need to do go to the firewall settings this all will not be done by you you are when you are working in the real time your systems because whenever you restart your system your ip address will keep on changing today your ip address might be one but when you are leaving you shut down your office you when you are leaving office you shut down your system tomorrow once you come you again restart the you again start the system so your ip address again changes so what they what, what they do is your ip address network people will make as a static ip address so that ip address will be added but actually your ip address will not be taken this is 49 dot 206 but when you go to mine let's see ip config okay just see now what is this 192.128.0.4192 is country based for india you have 192 but what it is showing here 49 so your ip address would not be added there it would be taking our ip address but internally microsoft will have an intermediate ip address talking to your system and the service in the cloud okay just go there just save now if you don't add this ip address it will not allow you to add your azure sql data warehouse or azure any patch service you want to access okay yeah just go there click here connect now it will connect for you right now you see this database is got created you have some demo db database you have external file you have data sources and file and you have sql dws dw sql dws db just select new window okay now come everything is same okay creating master key is same okay scoped credential is also same okay and data source is also same file format is also same and creating external table is also same is same but only in the case of scope credential it is different scope credential is different it is different in case of azure storage and azure data lake store okay in case of azure what you have done azure storage you have taken access keys right in access keys you have key 1 or key 2 but not connection string right we are not taking connection i told that connection string is for visual studio.net but here it is something different what you need to have is 
here we'll have yesterday other day i told what you need to do for azure azure data lake store you need to go to azure active directory right i told you azure active directory then you need to go for app registrations from this you get three values one is application id okay application key i'll show you don't worry the next one is application id yeah auth 2.0 token key these two you need to get from where you'll get let's go now let's go and get this now we'll create app registration from there i'll show you from where you'll get this application id application key and or token 2.0 okay yeah let's go there go to the portal now come to azure active directory you have below this create resource go there this azure active directory or access key will do it till last minute of my training okay will repeat this don't worry but this all need to be done actually this all will not be done by us there would be some administrator person or network person who is going to do but this is only for tomorrow if they ask you any questions then you can confidently tell that's the reason we are doing it actually we will not do this all in the real time they will only give this access key that applic uh, access key or application id a key this all then use and do it that is what people do it in the real time yeah just go there once you get azure active directory create app registration we already created one will not use will create a new one okay just go new registration here give some name of the application for this azure data lake store app registration okay we'll see whether it will take yeah because the size name of the size is very large so i thought it will not take it has taken now just click on create here okay right so go for this once you get rest go for this secrets and keys here okay before that i was telling you where did i write this yeah we'll write all this in the notepad so it will not be a confused for me okay from where i'll get this application application id okay just go there we have created a app registration till this we have come we have went to azure active directory app registration we have done just go to that once this is the name that you have created right overview did you see this there is something called application id or client id <coughs> okay just copy this copy and paste here okay now go to this application key and auth 2.0 token key okay we'll see that where you will get that application key or 2.2.0 application key okay let's go go here now first what you'll do we'll come to the secret then we'll come to that or you can go here also now in the overview just go for endpoints here click on endpoints now you all have all this don't take all just go for auth this endpoint 2.0 or token endpoint 2.0 or or token v1 you can take any of this okay both one and the same only either this or either this you can go anywhere anything you can take this the only thing is you have versions that's all okay just take 1.0 here this one you can take one or two i'm taking one okay now you got this okay the difference between one and two is 
it is differentiating with the version 2.0 and you don't have a version here that's all okay now you got this also endpoint also you got this now you need to have application key right just go there now go to secrets now from this application you got from endpoint you got or token 2.0 1.0 2.0 you are getting now go to secrets here okay now secrets now client secret you need to create you need to create new client or if at all you have you can upload we don't have we are creating just click on create okay now i'll key say as app key description when you want to expire one year two year or never i'll say never okay now when you say it is taking till 2299 okay just leave that copy this key here and paste it here now you have got right where did we take these all threes we have taken from this application key from overview we have taken this application id from endpoints we have taken or 2.0 or 1 2.0 version 1 version 2 any of one you type with 2 2.0 then access secrets or this i have created a new one i am selecting this okay now you got application key now let's go there okay now you have created you have created application application id app region you have created let's go to data lake go to data lake i'll create a folder now go to explorer okay now create new files called data files here new folder under this i'm trying to upload the files which are there with me okay i'm trying to upload Close it now you try to refresh right now what we need to do you want to use that app app registration you want to use that app registration for accessing this files in the blob for accessing these files in Azure data lake store what you need to do you need to give access to this azure data lake store how do you go give this using app registration that we have created right let's go there now you can give to the parent to the direct storage folder i can give to a sub one also that's up to you okay what i'll do i'll give to the parent one only go here i'll give to the parent to this so when i give the parent so subfolders will also get accessed no you want to go to the individual then create multiple access app registration give go to access here okay you don't have any permissions here you don't have okay just add here right now you need to select what name that you have given because i have not captured this is what azure data lake store app registration then you try to whenever you create it try to save that name of the app also yes this is what i have created azure data lake store app registration is app i have created just select this now give read write execute this folder all the folders parent folder and all the children folder then default read access permissions okay just say okay now it will give the permissions all okay see ya now you got tk yeah let's go there now you can see now go to access you got this now we are done so what you need to do we need to come with the step by step now just go i'll create new window we don't have master key 
so we'll be create by step by step now shall we do it or shall we do it tomorrow again this what do you say if you are okay we'll do it otherwise we'll do it tomorrow again the same thing shall, shall we do it tomorrow tomorrow okay fine chalo any doubts guys we have not done anything i've just done with azure storage but if i tell this app registration what i've told that azure and this i think you will be get confused we'll be able to do this and tomorrow cross query database also okay any doubts i'll be there for first uh, next 5 minutes if you have any doubt i'll just clear you just b by 6 am okay online if you are good to close it then we'll wind up ठीक है, we'll wind up. Yeah, I'll. Yeah, I'll. Yeah, tell me, tell me. Yeah, main difference between data storage and data lake is it depends on all the data lake is working on Azure Active Directory, but data. No, 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 no. I told you that for analytics. I'll show you this tomorrow. See Azure mm -hmm. Azure storage is object storage. Okay, B L O B. Yeah. When you go okay. for data lake store, this is file hierarchy. Okay. This is similar mm -hmm. to Windows Explorer, but that is not. It's like a object. Mm -hmm. It's like a object. so this is you will not able to perform any data analytics on top of data azure storage when you go for hd insight which is similar to hdfs that is nothing but hadoop and spark which uses backend as hdfs for storage and when you go for azure data lake analytics which is to perform analytics so these both will use the storage systems as a backend as azure data lake store only why because this is a file hierarchy but not azure storage they will not use azure storage for performing any data analytics i showed you this i think i have not shared that videos but i showed you this don't worry we'll come to that topic i think uh, this saturday or sunday i'll record that session what i have not shared with you this saturday and share you that all i'll do it and share you okay theek okay. hai that is not the difference of app that is only for what you have told is only for that access that is different no one cares about that access as i am telling you you are coming to know that these are two different but in real world no one tells that and no one knows what is that app registration or what is that everyone gives the id just use it create a script and run it do your analysis throw there theek okay? hai i'll do it don't worry we'll do it there is a topic there are hd insight data lake analytics much topic is there for one one week each and everything then we'll talk about that okay no need to worry then you will come to know why it is not used you yourself will tell me later till then just hold on okay okay chalo all right i'll share you this in next half an hour i'll ping you in the whatsapp no individuals will mails will be sent okay thank you Yeah thank you